Okay, I'm going to continue yeah. with the recording okay. now because this because it, okay. it, it, there's this quite a Confirm the rights of people, establish the hadood, establish the law, uh, and fulfill people's rights and protect people and so on and so forth. So he's basically, uh, this is a shift of focus and this is an important shift of focus and this is the only way we can survive from the Khilafah to the Sharia, where the Sharia becomes the center, center pillar around which we organize the formative thesis for Islamic life, the central pillar around which Muslims organize, uh, not the Khilafah. The Sharia is bigger than the Khilafah. The Khilafah is one manifestation uh, of, of the unity, one goal that we must be working for as an end goal that will motivate, energize uh, us, that will that, that will cause progress. You see how Erdogan said, that, you know, we want to join the EU, we want to join the EU, just to, to, to bring about progress within Turkey towards like this ideal, even though, or towards this objective, even though he may have never believed in it, mm -hmm. you know, but, but, but this is not, this is not the same thing. Not the same thing. Khilafah is not like joining the EU. I'm not saying this, it's the same thing, but you have an end goal that would motivate and energize people and that would bring about progress towards unity. It is important, economic integration between Muslims, you know, uh, mutual uh, sort of cooperation on, on various uh, issues. Uh, and, and uh, you know, the defense also, defense treaties, mutual defense, all of that. It, it, the Khilafah will, will basically be the catalyst of all of those manifestations of unity, cooperation, and coordination between Muslims. Now, having, uh, having more than one imam has been the position of some scholars. And, uh, you know, we have three different positions here. We have those scholars who said, without any reason, you can have more than one imam. Al Karamiya said this. Uh, and, and certainly you may blame me, but these are still Muslim. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. So, they are Sunnis. They're not Shia Muslims. They're within, so, otherwise, they're within Sunnism by and by. Yeah. Generic Sunnism. Yes. So Al Karamiya said this. They have their, their own excesses, and, uh, but uh, yes, they are within the Sunni uh, fold, but uh, they had their own excesses. Uh, so Zaydiya said this. Some of the Zaydiya said this. Some of the Mu'tazila said this. <clears throat> Without any reason, you can have more than one Imam. Um, some people said that you can have more than one imam if it is logistically difficult to have one. Those are the people who said that you can have more than one imam if it means the lands of Islam be became too vast mm. for one imam to control, too far away from each other, too vast for one imam to control. If it's al you can have more than one imam. And those are not a few people or uh, basically negligible. The, 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 um, imam Juwaini reports this from Imam Abdul Hassan al Ashari and the Disfraini. Uh, this was also the position of al Qurtubi and al Baghdadi. Uh, this was also the position of many of the Mu'tazila. This was also the position of, I would argue that this is what Imam Taymiyyah uh, is indicating when he, he says that if at some point for a masiyah or a sin committed by people, we uh, uh, split up or, uh, you know, or we became divided uh, and because of the incapacity of others, then having more than one imam is a legitimate Jake. arrangement, a legitimate alternative. So you have those three different positions. Now, am I denying that the vast majority of Muslim scholars said that having more than one imam is not acceptable, that the obligation is to have a singular political entity for all Muslims? I am not denying this. This, this, this is the majority. This is the decisive majority. Decisive majority of our Muslim scholars said regardless of the vastness of the Muslim lands, regardless of logistical difficulties, it is obligatory to install one Imam for all Muslims. Now, yeah, I, I is this that, a matter of certainty? No, it's, it's just not a matter of certainty. Just, I think we said that, we said that because all of these did not go and dig, dig what would have coming from, I dig exactly what has happened in the Messenger of Allah from between Mecca and Medina, and they did not dig in the in the Sahif of Medina, even they ignored it completely, and neglected it. They did not dig in the Najran Treaty, and they did not dig in in in, in the hadith about uh, and and the end of Surah Al Anfal. If they just looked at the Surah Al Anfal, it will be clear that that they are faulty. So it, it, we don't need to discuss that anymore. We have the evidence from Allah and His Messenger. We just uh, we just strike with everyone other against the world. It is ultimately the right of the people 
the right of self determination. If the people decide we 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 seclude ourselves and our own entity, as long as they are applying Islam and living Islamically, that's it. There's a slight segue yeah. here, but it needs to be reiterated: the fact that yeah, yeah. everyone seems to be in safety in numbers. They look for ijma. No, because 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 various you know, ijma is, is even irrelevant. But they they look into the Karamiya said oh, they are half Sunnah and so on. Zaidiya said mm, we have Shia. Uh, Mu'tazila, uh, they have issue with creed and so on. They play this game. That's a, that game should not be played anymore. That should be buried for good. We have Alhamdulillah and all the hadith collection, and we have we can dig all of these things, and we have some attack uh, research. It's on the table. If someone thinks there's a mistake there, a fundamental mistake, there may be smaller points here and there uh, to, to be corrected and improved definitely. But I think fundamental, it's clear. It's absolutely clear that there's Arab and Muslimin, and it's very clear. Uh, that that they are not part of the confederation. They are separate entities. They have, and the end of Surat Al Anfal is also clear. Those who embrace faith, I did not immigrate. What do I mean immigrate? Come physically? No, no. They live. They have their own communities, and they are not necessarily the one who are at, at Quraysh. The one at Quraysh who are uh, free from oppression is are something else different. That the one cannot establish deen, have an imam. The same with the one living in Abyssinia. Even their their leader there, Jafar. If we regard Jafar as leader or Najashi as the secret leader. Cannot even establish himself. So that's we're not talking about that. Those who embrace faith but do not immigrate, you have no uh, no no citizenship relation with them whatsoever. But the Quran then abrogated that only in matter of the next of kin, in matter of inheritance. And there's even discussion if that is really applies for the next of kin in matter of uh, because before that, if you one of the Arab and you, uh, your relative dies in Medina, you don't inherit him and he don't inherit you. It seemed to the end of Surah Al-Anfal uh, restrict that only in the matter of inheritance is the, uh, is, is the issue of, of uh, 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 allegiance is, is not decisive, most likely. But that's also all over the world. For example, if some die in Britain and his relatives are living in America as American citizens, they get the inheritance, which seems to be common, accepted by, by almost all but initially in Islam, it was even that was broken. So that's, uh, I, I think uh, we should refer to our research there. I think it's there's a breakthrough and the issue, the right of self-determination is well established. It's clear. There's nothing to be discussed there. I think it's well established. Yeah. I think I'm going to continue well, with this because there are some, some, some good points in there and I might skip ahead in a bit. Because that's, that's with, with, we can establish that with certitude. So we don't need to bother about Karamiya, Zaidiya, Ibn Taymiyyah. It, it's all irrelevant. I mean, that's 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 fundamentally what the whole point is: is to bring get people to go back to the text, rather than going back to people who are fallible human beings. Our prophet is not fallible. Allah is is all knowing. We go the, go to those sources because of protection of zikr, etc., etc. For the Imam of their place here, I share my point here, and I'm trying to be gentle because I have to be conscious of how words are easily misconstrued online. Don't you find that this discussion? of the quantity of imams and how they should be seems to be disconnected from the historical reality of the ummah, meaning that all of this discussion is happening almost munfasil tamam, almost as if it is happening in a vacuum with regards to even in the same time frame as those authors are writing. Because even the Abbasid and the Uthmani and Watan Khilafas, the majority of their own domains were just by name even. There was complete uh, uh, separate systems of government, taxation, sometimes even not even a nominal nod towards the Khilafah. And you've always had many hierarchy, hierarchical um, uh, dynasties within all of these after the time of the Umayyads. And then you've actually had complete disconnect, like between the uh, Mughals and the, um, uh, the the Ottomans, for example, right? There's a complete disconnect between the two of them. And there's a nod here and there, but the Mughal emperor never submitted yani, uh, to the, uh, the Ottoman Sultan. And so this whole notion of how many Imams should there be and whatnot, seems to be disconnected from the waqi' reality that since the time of the second uh, century, I 100 something Hijrah, we have always had competing uh, imams and competing dynasties and competing provinces that were for all practical purposes and sometimes officially completely disconnected from one leadership. What do you say to that? I agree completely, wholeheartedly. I, I, how, could, how could you contest to this? I mean, it's, it's just like you would be a lie. Yeah. And like so, you, ideologues lie about the history all the time to live uh, uh, their own fantasies. So I agree with this. Um, we, we, and, and it's just like <laughs> indisputable reality. Uh, and uh, as I said, this, it, this, even before this, you know, from the time of Ali, Ali, Allah, 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 
Some people consider that they were both imams at the same time. Uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair was an imam at the same time as, you know, uh, Yazid and Muawiyah, his son, and, and then Marwan, and, and then Abdul Malik, and, and so on. Uh, and he was he was the better imam, <laughs> you know, in all honesty. I mean, he was Abdullah ibn Zubair. How could you compare Abdullah ibn Zubair? Without a doubt, without a doubt, he was the, the better of the two at the time. Yeah. yeah. So... So the idea that yes, this is this is a, a reality that has always existed. Now, this did not change their their theory theory yeah. about the the singularity. But where does the theory come from? Here is the, the important part. Here is the theological foundation mm -hmm. of this theory, the theologic theological foundation uh, or the legal justification of this uh, theory. And so they report to the Quran, the Sunnah, the Ijma, like usual. There is not a single explicit ayah in the Quran, or close to explicit, or even apparent, uh, a verse in the Quran that demands a singular political entity for all Muslims. You know, so what is it that you can come up with? And how do you want to come up with this nation of yours? Well, they say, they say, they bring their, their okay. evidence. So, in the, so this nation of yours is one nation, and I'm your Lord, so worship me alone. This was basically addressing the line of prophets. Yes, and, yeah. and and then and then even if you say it, it applies to Muslims, it applies to our collective singular faith community. Yes, not, it's um, not a political in, yeah. the, in the religious sense, not in the political sense. Okay. And and then yeah, there's no evidence. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is messenger and those in authority among you. It was actually in plural for us. Exactly, exactly. Force. Is it against it? Yeah. But Sheikh, okay, let me take So now we take yeah. the Sunnah. Hmm. Now we take the Sunnah. If you buy the Khalifa, then you will take the last one. Man buy a Imam, then you will take the 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 Imam. So if you buy the Khalifa, then you will take the last one. If, if the Bayah is given to two Khalifas, kill the latter. Uh, whoever gives uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to an Imam, uh, then he should obey him as much as he can. And if, if another one comes to dispute him or to overthrow him, overthrow him then kill the, yeah, the, the, kill the other. Kill yeah. the other. Okay. Now, here is the issue. Uh, is the Prophet وسلم, talking to uh, Muslims? Uh, you know, this is just like the global moon sighting and the local moon sighting. Is he talking to Muslims in different localities? that you should not have more than one imam within the same dominion or the same territory, that's a possible interpretation. Mm -hmm. That is a accepted authenticity of, of those reports. Uh, and we accept them. Yes, that's Isn't it a possible interpretation? Uh, it's very clear. It's, it's, that's the only inter valid interpretation if we take the other hadith. Because these, these have been, as the problem, these have been ignored. People forgot about them completely, as if they are not there. It's amazing. But that's it. They did not take them on board. They clearly did not. They did not uh, study the issue of uh, Arabia and so on. In the, our research, I advised the uh, two sheikhs, respected sheikh, to take a look to that. Even the issue, even the fuqa were wavering about, for example, uh, the the hadith about uh, the the uh, which is most likely weak uh, that the 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 witness of an Arabi or a Bedouin don't accept it against a Hadari. It, it's most likely it is it is Arabi to someone who is a Madini, meaning someone who outside the domain. For another citizenship, his witness cannot be accepted because he don't live together. They don't have the same citizenship. The witness must be weak because of that. If it's authentic, most scholars say about Bedouin and people in Hadra, they have no concept that 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 the Bedouin sometimes is substituted wrongly for Arabi. Arabi is not a Bedouin. Arabi is someone who have another citizenship than the Medina state. That's it. That's Arabi. That's Arabi. And that's the problem. Even the concept of Arabi is is is, is uh, the, the people in uh, uh, they they don't they don't understand what's going on. Uh, so that has to be that. That's the setup. I think that two issues are discussing it from general logic and things like that. But the hadith uh, with it provided, even if they are uh, uh, assuming that they are authentic, they apply to a certain domain. But it's very clear. But if someone comes disputing with this current Imam. It, it doesn't say this kind of image for all Muslims or all the world, or it is. No, it can be in a limited domain, like explained by the other hadith. So I think the discussion is based that nobody attended to that. And I cannot blame them, but it's really a great negligence in Islamic history that this was not taken on board, unfortunately. Unfortunately. But I think that's settled. We don't need to comment on that. We just refer to the research and ask 
these two respected sheikhs to read that and improve on it or criticize it or see what, what they can get out of that. I'll try and link some, some the, I'll link the works in here as well because it's important, not just for the shiuch, but everyone to, 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 to review this material because we're not talking, uh, you know, breathe here. We're, we're, this is stuff that's all physically available for you to check for yourselves so that it becomes a compelling argument for yourselves. He does discuss the Saqif as well and the burial at Ijma Sahaba. It's worth, we've already covered this in previous halakas as well, but it's worth at this juncture just to... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is 47... When the Ansar convened at Saqif at Bani Sa'ida, or the Shed of Bani Sa'ida, or the portico of Bani Sa'ida, whatever you call it, did, did they not say, you know, they will appoint an emir from our side? Okay, they said to the Muhajirin. Okay. If this matter is of such importance, you know, I, I just want people to, to reflect on this. By the way, the arguments that Abu Bakr radiallahu anh came back were aqli and mantiqi and not shari. I, he didn't quote a hadith. Yeah. He used an aqli argument to say you can't have two emirs. Gonna, yeah, and this is an important point as well. But anyway, yeah. The, the, the whole discussion in, in Sahih al-Bani that people need to just reflect it's on. It's a, a very discussion. deep, I don't want to go there, but it's yeah. a very deep, even theological issue, yeah. but that's not for today's So, yeah. So, min amir min amir, if, the, if this matter, if yeah. al-hukumat ilahiyya, the governance of God, is the crux of Abudiyya, is the basically the most important uh, manifestation, the, the ultimate goal of Abudiyya, which is what uh, Sheikh Abdul Hassan Nadwi critiques in his Tafsir Siyasi al Islam, the political interpretation of Islam. Would the Sahaba be so <laughs> unaware of this matter and the, the details, the, the, the finest details of this matter? Would, would the Ansar be unaware, you know, to this extent? Would they have this much disagreement among so themselves? The pushback here from their side, and again, this is a discussion, obviously, I'm sympathetic to your, your stance here. The pushback from their side is that you are neglecting the fact that the Sahaba understood that this was so important that they delayed the burial of the Prophet or even if you don't say delay it, they didn't even wait for his burial until they had elected Amir. So for them, having an Khalifa and having an Islamic political entity was so important that even the burial of the Prophet did not take precedence over that. So they argue to us, this is ijma of the Sahaba that you must actively work towards establishing an Islamic polity. I completely concur. That's order versus anarchy. That is not so, a singular political entity. So then this leads us to the the, 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 the other point, which is a very difficult one. And the, the, just keep in mind that there are many ijma'as that have been yeah. reported on many issues. Like, look at the ijma'a, for instance, that the Khalifa has to be Qurashi. Isn't that an ijma'a? Well, no, because of Hanif and others. Well, but, yeah, some have said there's a ijma'a, yes. Many, many have said there's a ijma'a. Many reported this ijma'a. Yes. Even though, as usual, there's no ijma'a, but, but, but yes, it's but, reported. But can, can, can you neglect an Ansar who, who said that? Well, they didn't even know it was there. Exactly, yeah, my point is, okay. this incident has a lot of... Can, 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 can you also neglect Omar, radiallahu anhu, who said if Abu Ubaidah were alive, I would have not mm -hmm. thought about anyone else, and if he were not... And if he was not, then I would have chosen Mu'adh. And in yeah. some other hadith, he said, Salim Mawla Abu Hudayfa, yeah. both Mu'adh and Salim Mawla Abu Hudayfa are not from Quraysh. So even if Al-Hafid ibn Hajar, Imam ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, says that people who are reported as Ajma'ah, they need to figure out how to reinterpret this statement. They, they can either say, Muhammad, you know, to say that Omar uh, changed his mind later, mm -hmm. or that the Ajma'ah happened after Omar. Mm -hmm. And... Anyone who knows about this knows that the difficulty of having an ijma after Omar, yes, you know, the difficulty of establishing an ijma after Omar. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you have Ansar, you know, uh, unaware of, the, of, of this sort of indubitable fact of the aqidah mm -hmm. of the Muslimin clearly developed uh, afterwards, uh, okay. and then Omar also unaware that, that it's just mm -hmm. it's that this is not Monty. this is just it's not just... logical. Jayin. So, then, Sheikh, let me okay, so uh, just no, let, let, let me uh, just to comment the following. Uh, that, uh, invoking the Ansar is, is, is a bit difficult because what happened in Saqifa, according to the best hadith we have in our research about Saqifa, luckily we have that one. And it sprung, actually, it was a branch from the study of, uh, of, uh, of the, uh, is that must be the Imam from Quraysh and so on. And we refuted the Saqifa completely, so this is not true. It was not discussed in Saqifa this way. The Ansar, uh, the uh, Sa'ad ibn Ubada, let, let's face it, has desire for power. He is a very stubborn, very uh, self-conscious man, even before Islam, if he divorced a woman, nobody dare marrying him, uh, her after him. So it's such a dominant alpha male type character he was. So he wanted to, to become the Khalifa, and he gathered his people in Saqifa. The, the mistake he made, and their mistake, is they gathered 
not in the masjid, outside the Muslim, they separated themselves. That's the first mistake. When uh, when Abu Bakr and Umar and uh, and uh, and uh, Abu Ubaidah learned from that, usually from other Ansar, because uh, 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 Saad ibn, ibn Ubada is is a leader of the Khazraj, and uh, uh, the, the these Ansari who to told these Sahaba that they are meeting there and uh, just warned them they are from us. There was some kind of tribal friction still there in their hearts because they're human being. Let's face it. So. Essentially saying, go there. But say, don't worry about them, make your choice. And that, uh, essentially enticing them to go. <laughs> if you read between the line, that's a tactic. I tell you, the people are meeting to make something, but they are irrelevant. Don't worry about them, do your conclusion. The matter is your matter. You will say, no, no, no. I will go and argue with them and show them that they are mistaken. So they went there. The discussion first, is they said, these uh, people from Quraysh, they are immigrants. They came here and they want to. Uh, to control the, the city, which is your city originally, and they are just guests. Come here. This is a very grave statement. Should not have been uttered by some of them. Obviously, that was uh, that was rejected right away. Then they tried to get to a, one of them. Suggested Minna Amir or Minkum Amir, and Umar said, two swords in one sh in one sheath do not do not uh, do not co combine. It's not possible because it, there would be conflict. But obviously, they understood two separate Amirs, completely independent. Essentially, meaning. But they did not articulate what we say. No, we'll divide Medina between us. We have one side and one side. This may be another discussion. They meant most likely two different Amirs while they're mixed together in the same domain. That seems to be physically not possible. It will not work. So he argued against that. And then the discussion continued. And nowhere, nowhere uh, uh, was that the Imam Asri Quraysh. Only Abu told them, listen, the Arabs have been led by Quraysh for centuries. They will not agree to someone non Qurashi because if a non Qurashi is chosen, you, you deserve to be Imam. I'm not denying that, what Abu Bakr Sayyid said, but the other Arabs will rebel. They say, How come that the Khazraj having an Imam from them? We are more worthy, we are more courageous, we are more wars won in Jahiliya and Islam. So, what should we? But Quraysh, everyone accept this is the leading organization, the leading state, centuries. So, the people have been born under the leadership of Quraysh. And their father and grandfather. So it's like well established traditional authority. We should not go out of that out of practical reason. So the claim that uh, that, uh, that some scholars say that Abu, Abu Bakr argued them that uh, said Imams are only from Quraysh is, is a is a lie, is a fallacy. It's not true. He did not argue this way. He argued purely political and practical. And then he said, I showed for you Abu that a blunder, which Abu Bakr Umar admitted the blunder said, I showed for you uh, Umar or Abu Ubaidah. Give by to anyone of them. He should said. The correct way we say it, now we go to the masjid and see what the Muslims say. That's a blunder. That's the only blunder there. Which Omar said it was a blunder. And then we, we, we were afraid there would be a split and the problem, a civil war, and we gave a worker bay'ah. It was a fault. It should not have been that this way. But it was correct in that state. That's number one. So that's number one. So the argument from, from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, 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 from uh, Ijma and, and Syria doesn't apply here. Uh, but anyway, that, that some uh, Ansar argue differently showed that the issue of Ijma is, is a fallacy. Yeah. Besides, Ijma itself is essentially a fallacy. We'll, dis we'll discuss that in another occasion. Secondly, it's used for intellectual terror, essentially. You claim Ijma to silence everyone. And it, it turns out on all these issues, there is no Ijma. Secondly, so this fault has been corrected. Good. That's number one concerning this. The issue of Qurashiya of Imam is also we are refuted, but the research was not completed because we branched to the Zaqifa and the thought Zaqifa is more important to complete. Then we branched the other hadith. We say the Imam from Quraysh, as long as they, if they rule, they rule with justice. And if they are asked mercy, they grant mercy. And if they, uh, if they promise, they fulfill their promise. Whoever does not do that, Allah scares and the cares of, of the angels and all be, will be upon him. Meaning essentially is the kafir. And most narrator in the major book stop there because they did not dare mention the rest. The rest they say, if they don't comply and do that, commit this one of these three crimes or all of them, then put your sword on your necks and exterminate them. That's Abidu Khadra'ahum. We have a research about that. That's what Ahmed bin Hanbal and others tried the best way to hide and sweep under the carpet. Unfortunately, especially Ahmed is the leader in this region. And we refused him completely in our research. So that's uh, that that we branched in that. So we left the original one about the Qurashiya of Imam that it is it's irrelevant. We left it to, to, to be done later because it become irrelevant really, but we have to complete it. 
all all the reports there are clearly is reporting that the imams will be will be from Quraysh because of the historic situation until a certain time they will be exterminated. And the hadith also says that. So that's all is there. So all of this, uh, all issue is that uh, the, the two the two Sheikh Bashaikh are discussing from the usual thing they find the book of fiqh and book of Ahkam uh, Sultaniyah, Mawardi, and so on. They they unfortunately they did not uh, or maybe they didn't get they did not get the opportunity to dig deep and collect all evidences, all the hadith, all narration, all they statement. And some of the areas. I mean, hmm? obviously your work they didn't they, they have contended some of them, for example, about the issue of Quraysh and it not being an actual provision. An obligation is saying that the Arabs are. Well, just a the report. It's a yeah. And, and yeah. the history have proved that Khabar and who warned when the Khabar when it, they failed to be the Imams. And so, so he's already mentioned that. And also, in terms of uh, the other thing is, I'm not sure if I, we've got to that the one day. about the the which I entitled as Salama fi Ibtal Shat al Qurashi al Imama safety in in uh, in in refuting the condition of Qurashi for Imam is not complete. It's almost complete. And there also the statement that Omar mentioned said. If uh, Abu Ubaidah was there, I would give him Imam. Abu Ubaidah is from Quraysh. But Abu Ubaidah is gone. If Mu'ad would have been alive, I would have given him Imam. Mu'ad is definitely not from Quraysh and not alive Quraysh. And then Salim Mawla Abu Hudayfa is not Quraysh. So uh, this is uh, all of this shows that besides, in, especially the statement for Umar is having extra weight because in, in matters of Imama and who is the regent uh, and uh, Shura and so on, Umar seemed to be the, the most understanding under the, from the Sahaba for that issue. His, his understanding is better than Abu Bakr, is better than anybody else except Ali. These are the two who understood Shura to its utmost maximum. These are the two who understood to its utmost maximum. So also, his, his statement is having more weight, but it's, again, I say, it's irrelevant what he says. What Allah and Messenger say is clear, and we have collected it, we've finished the recitation of Allah soon and published it. But Saqifa is out, and uh, the, the the horrible hadith, the horrifying hadith about uh, exterminate their green, exterminate them about these uh, these uh, deviant imams, and, uh, uh, even if they are from Quraysh, uh, is also in a, in a research out. I think it's also available in English. It's available Arabic and English. When you say horrible, if that's because the certain it's horrifying. Yeah. Some, yeah. some scholars of hadith almost faced execution from Al Mahdi Al Abbasi, who is a misguided so called. is named Mahdi, but he's the Mahdi. A misguided khala. He almost killed uh, Sharik ibn Abdullah al Qadi for narrating the hadith. So Sharik needed to hide for several. It's also in the research there. The story is there. And who narrated it. And also, so it's worth talking about. Horrifying for everyone. So many reported it and cut, cut the tail of it. Also, it's worth interjecting just about the issue of the other form of intellectual terror is about the burial of the Prophet being delayed. When if you assemble all the narrations, that's, it happens. That is all absurd. This is all fabrication absurd. Actually, that happened the same day he had so passed away. In the morning, it happened. And Muslims were discussing in the masjid, Abu Bakr, and Ali ibn Abi Talib, with some Shia claim he was busy collecting Quran. It's just rubbish, nothing. He was, uh, other claim, no, he was busy burying the Prophet and washing him. is also rubbish. That's not true. What happened is that Ali made the tactical error. It's a tactical error. You can't make, make some type of technical errors. It's not a Sharia error by secluding himself and Abbas and Bani Hashim in a house discussing the matter. It is not for you, Ali, in your rank. And uh, uh, Abbas maybe. Abbas is a secondary person. But you are a fundamental leader of the Muslims. You could not exclude yourself from a group in a house discuss matters. You should be in the masjid. The same with uh, we addressed Ansar. That mistake made it but made, made that he was not presented as a candidate. Maybe if he was presented, he may the Muslim have chosen him. But he was not there. He was secluded in Abbas. That's the marriage is there. Read the Saqib. So the Ansar made the blunder, Sa'ad ibn Ubana made the blunder, collect the Ansar in the Saqib far away, excluding the other Muslims, who he should not have done. He should have been in the masjid. And the same with Ali radiallahu anhu made that mistake. It's permissible. You can't do it. Stay aside and discuss with your people. But in the case of Ali, he did not make the blunder of Sa'ad al-Ubadah. They didn't they decide to appoint Khalifa or anything in exclusion of Muslims. He's better than that. Sa'ad ibn Ubadah committed that blunder. So that's, that's the issue. But secluding at one side and from the whole community of the Muslims, of that existing entity, because the, the, the federal state of Medina exists already, and the messenger of Allah just died. We need to appoint a leader in his place. That's all that is there. That's all that is needed. We don't need to establish Khilafah. Khilafah is, I mean, uh, head of state is established. The one is gone. Now who replaces? 
This one went without appointing a Khalifa in that sense or having a deputy by deliberation, by Allah's instruction. He gave hints for certain people. He gave hints, no doubt, especially in the last few uh, years of his life. But he never appointed anybody who could establish to enforce the principle of Shura. And they managed it reasonably well, despite the, the, the small blunder in the case of election of Abu Bakr and the, the bad blunder of Saad ibn Ubada and the small mistake of Ali. It worked out. It worked out. Uh, this, the next section, now this is quite, this, this is where I think we may have an area of divergence where it, there's a discussion about removal of al being sufficient and civil order mitigating the need for khilaf. I'm paraphrasing here, but I'll play it, inshallah, and then you can... Hey, then, let me then be very explicit because you're, in my humble opinion, you seem to be skirting around a very awkward reality and I want to verbalize it and so let's deconstruct this reality. You seem to be very clearly insinuating that these a hadith, or let me just say the concept of imara and khilafa and leadership and whatnot, that as long as there is civil order and as long as anarchy is eliminated, that to a great extent, the spirit of what the sharia wants us to do has been accomplished. And therefore, it seems to me that since we are living in lands where at least many lands, not all of them, many lands where anarchy has is, does not exist, there's not complete lawlessness and chaos. There, there is civil order. There is uh, a means of people cooperating together for the greater good. It seems that the existence of these systems mitigates, in your eyes, uh, uh, this notion that other Islamist movements have of working towards what they call the Khilafah. Am I correct in this verbalization? Of plantar fasciitis, then you know that this type of pain is just the worst. Gel pads and simple stretches. Uh, so, so as I said, I, I believe that it's an obligation on us to work towards the Khilafah as an end goal, basically towards work towards Muslim unity or the political expression of that Muslim unity or actualization of that Muslim unity. But there are many other priorities and it, it depends on what we mean by the Khilafah and uh, which strategies we, we will adopt to achieve that political unity. And I don't believe that we can just have the Khilafah drop down from the heavens on us like you know we, we just can't have we can't start by the Khilafah this notion that we will overthrow the government in in Morocco for instance and march the troops from Morocco to Jakarta and and use a, you know some uprisings here and mm. there to enable us by the way Morocco is just an example it's just not we don't have any cool for the record just just one thing I mean what they've done is they've interchanged the issue of Khilafah and the no, issue no. Of uh, the, 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 the also the question is uh, I think yeah Sheikh Yasser is uh, assuming that uh, not understanding the position of the other one and the other one is not articulating it properly uh, what's priority and so on it's not the issue, the issue is first to establish if if a, if a, pol a polity exists in a muslim domain country the question is that is this poly polity a legitimate ru rule according to islam if it is not it has to be changed it has to be there's no ifs and buts on that area there's no ifs and buts with all possible means. If it's not possible by 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 the sword, maybe you don't have the capability, then by the word and then by hating by the heart. You cannot say you cannot say you accept it. That's that's will undermine Islam, it undermine Ubudiya. It will annihilate Ubudiya completely. So yeah, but this, the this condition, is the crux of the issue because the one, condition of that is very clear in the hadith, what I mentioned that hadith is that they have to rule with justice. If they are requested mercy, they should grant mercy, obviously, unless there's a barring condition of Sharia to grant mercy, like, for example, commuting hudud. If hudud reaches the imam, he cannot commute them, and few other things. But anything else which can be commuted, and the more mercy side, if requested. It, it, it does not need to, to be merciful to, to start with, but if requested. And the third one, if they promise something, or or oblige themselves of something in the in election campaign, or something else, or promise them during the bay'ah, they have to fulfill. Whoever violates all these three, and also ruled by kufr, there's no truth that Allah has revealed, they, they, they cannot be left in place. And the hadith says, khabra'ahum, exterminate them with the sword. Put your sword on your shoulders and abide. that's addressing the ummah. Now, the address to the ummah is addressed to every person, but not every person can use the sword. Using the sword and removing the government needs organization, need work, and maybe underground organization, but it is legitimate because this rule is not legitimate. It's not legitimate. But, if for that, you have to have sufficient tamkeen, you are the majority. If non-Muslim country, like in America and so on, you are barred from that. You are there in the case of taqiyya. 
And the only thing uh, prohibited from you there to the border limit you should not transgress is that you don't join their army and fight Muslims. That's that's it. Or spy on Muslims. That would be act of cover. Anything else goes. And you don't obey, obviously obey anything haram or commit anything haram there. And if you're forced to do something haram, you have to reject it and immigrate or whatever situation can be discussed in detail. So where Muslim majority countries, if it's if really by Allah has revealed is not established with certitude. There's something violating it with certitude, like usury, banking, and so on. That regime is not legitimate. Rebellion, not rebellion, using the sword, that has to be a study on the practical condition. Do you have the ability? Because commanding good and forbidding evil with the hand, if you can, if you can't, and so on. Can and can't has to be analyzed by the people in the context of their space and time where they are. So, and the so people, people usually are able to recognize, do we have the capability or you don't have, and so on. And they will be questioned the Qiyamah if they have done the analysis correctly and not deviating by desire. So th this is articulated based off that hadith, or is this generally because of the issue of... Uh, no, no, the, in Mecca, right. that's their obligation. If okay, is, so, Salah, it's a, it's so Salah, Salah that, being the whole the thing. The package is clear, otherwise yeah, yeah. it does not make any sense. Yeah. And all, saying, cause, cause, and, cause the, and otherwise, all what Isa was announcing all his life, the kingdom of God is coming soon. The kingdom of, he's announcing is the, is the coming of Islam. So the, Islam what is that? Where the kingdom of God, where the rule of, 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 of revealed law, will become dominant because it the, was the, gone. Because just, gone just to, from Bani Israel gone a thousand years before, it's, it's evaporated. To, to, to really hone in on the point, what the problem is here, because people conflate the issue of Khilafah, so imagine Khilafah, because what happens is this this is where it gets confusing for, for, for the layman. Leave the word Khilafah, this is all the following yeah, well, one after the prophet. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Because that everyone's understood the mandate based off of the hadith which relate to Khilafah, then they, they ignore, they, they're not familiar, they haven't reframed the discussion towards... That means they did, they did not... Uh, they did not uh, we agree, uh, no, people uh, don't do the homework. No, but, they did but, not do the double of the Quran all of it, and the Sunnah all of it, that's it. But the thing is, again, people, we're, we're, we're looking at people in a certain, in a, in a certain vacuum, in a, in a certain a circumstance. So when, for example, one side is talking about Khilafah, when the other side says, okay, this is not about Khilafah, this is about Umara uh, and, 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 and all this, some of this stuff has just been completely neglected in the absence of it discussing the Khilafah. Then, so for example, this issue about uh, the uh, establishment of Salah. So people will, will, for example, take it at its literal face value word, as in the establishment of the... But there are many other the hadith. You have to take all of them uh, on board. But plus also some of these, some of these, some of the people, a lot of the... A lot of the There's uh, no escape. Scholarship. There's no escape. Yeah. You uh, escape for one hadith. That's the way people who divide the Quran and Sunnah in pieces and cut mm -hmm. that what they don't like away. That can be get someone even to the border of Kufr, like some madkhali. They enter the domain of Kufr. Which specific issue in terms of justifying uh, ruling by Kufr? Exactly, because they are justifying the rulers. That's all what they want. Mm. They are traitors. That's it. Because later on in this this same video, they start talking about a spectrum. So what's handy now is we can circle back to it when we get to that point, which is there isn't necessarily a spectrum. There there is a mandate. Rather than, you know, obviously somebody may be in a situation of capability, incapability in this case. That but the, there, the, there should... the, every Muslim has to judge his situation and see I am capable or not. And every organization has to judge it. And Yom Qiyamah, they will ask if they did that honestly. That's it. And, scholar, and, it's, and it's important for the scholarship to speak honestly and to articulate that's it. Not, the person should. But that's, that's other, the problem. Other, it's because people don't see it. Why Allah told us about in the Ladina Amun Kathira Malhbari or Rahman that Kuluna Amun Naswil Batal or Suduna? Plenty of scribes and monks, they consume people probably illegitimately and they misguide from the way of Allah. Just to, 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 to make the Jews and Christians look bad. No, they look bad and you will be like them if you do the same. That's it. And the Hadith, Akthar Munafiki Ummati Qurra'uha, the reader, the scholars. The intellectuals, the majority of them are munafiq. The majority of munafiq of the ummah are from this class, not from the street sweeper and the farmer. They're usually humble, simple Muslim. The, this, the, this, this puts more indeed. emphasis, this puts puts more emphasis when you park the issue of khilaf and you focus in on the issue of ruling and the absolute mandate for it. So that there's That's no wiggle room. Of there's no... They never mentioned the word khilafah anywhere. It mentioned the, there's a chapter what Hakimiya shows the border of Kufr and Iman there. Clearly. I mean, here's, here's another parallel, for example, where people say voting for Kufr, uh, you know, they start arguing like, oh, okay, it's, it's Kufr system and fluffy diet terminology. You have to be precise. Voting, ruling by Kufr is Kufr. 
etc cetera, et cetera. being precise so that there's no wiggle room this is this is this is what i, I suppose the, the endeavor is right now i'll continue with this because there's also this does have some kind of you know again so framing it from the point of view because they're saying that okay we're not in this situation it start talking about prioritization that's, uh, that's another discussion now between political parties and persons about the reality what can be but done in this instance that's something is yeah. what must be done and the border of sharia are clear the deen of allah is obvious but the thing there. is if, if people have parked the issue of khilafah to the side like for example entire... one, one, that one side is called discussing say about the issue that does does a fasa can become an imam or become a leader or be elected in a person Say all evidences from Quran and Sunnah say that a fasa cannot be, and if he commits fisk, he should be removed peacefully or otherwise. And say, but many scholars who said otherwise, they are the cause for fitna of the Muslim and undermining of the deen. That's it. That's it. That's it. Because they want to pull themselves from responsibility, or they want to deal with the fasa and receive salary from him. And that's it. I'm going to continue with the recording because there's there's some bits that does. Yeah, it's just like it's just sitting there, guys. But 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 but, but this thought yes. that you overthrow the government in one place, you take over the, the, that one, one country, and then you march the your troops and uh, bring everybody under that. that well, that's that, a mistake uh, because central that, uh, rule that, or government. That, that's based it's, on it's that it has, that you have to unify not. everyone by force that they cannot be in split units. But we have shown that's in the right of Sydney. It's finished. It's gone. But I think you the what evidence. Is, what are you talking about doing? Yeah, okay. So there's two, two issues. What is the two, evidence? Oh, there's no need to discuss all of this. That's maybe Hezbi Tahir or some people thinking this way. Yeah, it's, 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 is the evidence is finished, game over. We don't need to discuss that anymore. Yeah, I mean, just, just to clarify. So, for example, if we had, say, for example, Afghanistan took over, uh, you know, as well, I suppose it's no longer hypothetical. They're ruling by Islam. Then you have an entity, another entity, Pakistan. The onus is you don't, you don't. The onus is on the people to to rise up and, and take over. Well, the people in Pakistan, that's their obligation. And Afghanistan can give them help. But there's no obligation in Afghanistan to, to, to go and conquer Pakistan or vice versa. It's actually prohibited to do that. Unless it is an aggression from a Kafir entity or Muslim aggressing against other one and don't accept mediation. One, one question on that. One question. You know, in the Confederations uh, situation, when they've already agreed a cessation and the, you have one, say for example, both are Islamic entities, mm -hmm. and one of them veers. So, for example, you gave the example in the previous. Uh, they allow riba. Does that other state now have the the permissibility to to fight it? If if it if the the, the, the confederation it was initiated by people who were in a state of war with us and they came to the confederation and the war ended and they became a confederate, if they go back to usury, they have broken the confederation and get going to back to the state of war. If two Muslim entities, but if they were not a state, an enemy state, they were never an enemy state. Say we want to join a confederation. Say you cannot join us with 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 usury, uh, abolish usury, and join us in confederation. If they're both Muslim but, entities. Both Muslim entities. One of them effectively apostatizing in, in from a from a from a okay. legal system. Mm -hmm. Does do the other entity obligated to to remove it or in, intrude on it in any way? Only if 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 the apostasy is a war like they attack us by war. I see, I see. We are different. We are different people. We we decided Islam is not for us. We want to go out. Ma salama, bye bye. To the head with them. Just tell them we are going to Jahannam. That's all. Okay. Want. But if they start, then start to be maharib, that's a different issue. If they if do, if do anything which is uh, equate to uh, war or war declaration, yes. Okay. So basically, every everything will need its own case by case study. I suppose. Yeah, that's because... you can analyze that based on the evidence is available. Okay. I'm just going to continue now because uh, so he's mentioned that bit about um, not being realistic and, and taking over another state. Let's just realistic. It, it does not that's, sound that's feasible. Not realistic, not now, realistic. We don't want to discuss that. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, there are points. He's going to be going into some areas of quite interest because he's going to mention shura, other separation of power, independence of judiciary. So a lot of this is good, some good stuff in there. That's why. Oh, yeah, that's, that. that's, that's a meaty stuff. Oh, but that's as uh, getting another country unifying by force. Yeah. All of that depending upon the, the false premises, which we have finished with that. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to go to that. But the thing and, is, there, there, is, there, is a, there is some overlap. Because when you, for example, negate the priority of Khilaf or reframing it about implementation of law, you kind of absolve your responsibility. And then you preoccupy yourself with entirely, just, just, just for example, uh, General Dawa. 
But if you're already a Muslim, no, da'wah to establish Islamic rule. What do you mean general da'wah? That's well, it. Well, I mean, again, because because you'll see later on in this video, there are there is a there is a kind of thing about you know just spreading the message generally, like for example in the West, whatever. And then don't worry about like, the West. We talk about Muslim domain. But, but even even Muslim domain, for example, if people like they're not praying or something, and then just spreading salah, but having a neutered version of Islam, not going into the issue of that, there's a requirement to be ruled That's a negligence, but this organization like Tabligh al Jama'a said, we are not involved in politics, we just get the people from 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 uh, from bars into the masjid. That's our job. We so is that a neglect? That is negligence though, isn't it? Because they're not addressing wider yeah, issues. Whatever it is, maybe they, they want to address that later, maybe they have another ishtihad, but that's okay. not difficult. So, okay. so for this, it's a strategic thinking on their part, and it's obviously. And when that. when they when there's a conference in the late eighties in America, with various groups how to how to establish Islam and Khilaf and so on, Tablighi Jamaat sent a letter saying we will we will greet you, Salam alaikum. Our job is to take them from Hamarat to Masjid. You take from there and do your political work. That was said. Okay, so it's the owner, effectively cooperation in some respect. It's just getting the people from Hamarat and so on. That's that's we're focusing on that. We we don't we're not qualified or able to do the other one. But Alhamdulillah, you are doing that. Take them over. Mm -hmm. That's when they were sensible. After that, in the in the nineties, they split and have problems. Until now, they didn't get out of it, because ultimately, ultimately, if 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 someone calling for Islam, and deliberately leave important things. But whatever excuse, sometimes the excuse is valid, that's okay. But sometimes the excuse is not valid. Then the result is that they will be split and there will be hatred and enmity. Evidence, Allah Shah said about the Christians, those who said we are not Sarain, we are Nasara, we took their covenant. They forgot or they for, has forsaken some part of that what they have been uh, given as a dhikr to study and implement. فَأَغْرَيْنَا بَيْنَهُمُ الْعَدَاوَةُ وَالْبَغْضَاءِ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ That resulted in enmity and hatred between them until يوم القيامة because that what they have forsaken is forgotten, gone, no way to revive it again. As long as they are not Sarin, Nazara, Christian, they will have disputed to them until يوم القيامة because they ignored something important which should have not be ignored. Not brushing the teeth, they ignored something very important. For some reason, maybe at that time it was some ishtihad of them. Like I'm confident, like for example, the, the disciples and the few people around them, they knew that Isa was not crucified and he was, uh, and uh, uh, he reappeared to them. Fine, that's it. But because of the huge campaign of the authorities that, that we crucified your, your Messiah, we turned him into an imposter where, and everyone land up, land down, even the Jews outside Palestine, that news spread. They did not dare confronting the people with the reality. Also, they figured if we use that, we tell them you killed the Messiah, you are guilty in front of Allah, they will become they become full of remorse and they will embrace the faith. And this really happened. So for the benefit of da'wah, they don't tell the truth to the public. They told it to a limited group. And it is somewhere in bits and pieces. But the general account is that he was crucified and rose from the dead. Because that's beneficial for the da'wah to argue to everyone. You are guilty. You let the Messiah being killed. It's better than saying Allah saved him and someone else was crucified and he appeared to us. He came to us and then was ascended to heaven. It's better for the da'wah. But that's gone now. Nowhere any any valid reliable record shows that. You can glean it from from uh, like, like uh, footnotes here from under the line. That's a substantial point. Another they... substantial point I think they forsaken is to, to tell the people that in the last... Uh, uh, last, uh, the last meal, which they have a, a celebration day in it, actually they got a, a, a table spread from heaven. Why didn't tell the people that? Because that table spread was on the condition that they, if anyone commit kufr, he will be punished more severely than anyone in the universe. But because they failed to protect the Messiah and run away when he was attacked, they felt ashamed to tell the people that. Now we have a final meal. Is it from heaven or not? And this gave a opportunity for someone else, like like the uh, the false apostle Paul, to say, "I know what has happened there. I, uh, the Messiah told me in in vision when I met him in the spirit that he broke bread and gave it to the people, and take a cup, cup of wine, give it to the people. The bread is my body, and the wine is my blood. That's that's the heavenly tab tablet of Paul for us. If that other one was broadcasted, and they had the courage to say it, 
he could not have invented that. It would have been a general story to everybody. You see, if you neglect something important, it will lead to the division and such. In case of Islam, the record is protected. Just go and, 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 and work on it. Don't go to Ibn Taymiyyah and the Mawardi and Zayd and Abed al-Hamad al-Mas'ari. Go to the record. The record is there. And nowadays, nobody has an excuse. Everything is in computer. You can sit and work. But work, work hard. That's all what we're telling the people. Okay, I'm going to continue with this. But it's not a way to go. And we have the opportunity. Now, in time, past, we can say, okay, that was in so many books and scattered here and there. You cannot find it easily. Maybe there's an excuse. Some of it was hidden deliberately. Some of it was hidden deliberately by some scholars. I don't want to mention name now, not to poison the atmosphere. Some big scholars. You mentioned it to my hadith, say, oh, this is one broker. Oh, he's not broken, but he wants to get away from responsibility or respond to that hadith. And get filthy hadith and declare them, oh, uh, it has been narrated, established. Like Muhammad bin Muhammad saying, uh, we have 10, ten ch channels saying you have to have patience with the rulers. There's no 10 channels. Where are they? Show us. Min asharati awjuh. Awjuh means a channel of narration, meaning from 10 sahabi. You bring me even three sahabi, anything narrated like that from them. Bring it. There's not even three there. This is like when people think this is Jamal on this. No, that's, that's, that doesn't work this way. There's, there's plenty of, 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 of contamination in Islamic history after, after, after Al Hassan surrendered Khilafah, uh, in this shameful surrender to Muawiyah, the Munafiq. Yeah, so well, and that, until now, it's a we have to remove this contamination. Irony is that kind of that kind of that you wouldn't pass a GCSE in maths if you did you didn't put your workings in the, in your maths exam. Yeah, we take this for hadith. Somebody says something and you don't check the statements. Yeah, at least check people call qualified don't check all, check all channels of the nation. Uh, check for example the, the famous hadith they lie for example in Taha we say in his aqidah and we don't we do, we obey our Imam Sanson until unless we see kufr bawah. He's relying with the hadith in Bukhari. Yeah, that's that's one channel of. That's one narration from Ubadah ibn Samit. That's his wording. He says, we give bay'ah, etc. We don't rebel against the ruler unless we see kufr bawah. But the same hadith narrated him with a snad is as good or better. He's saying, unless he command you with a disobedience publicly. That's the kufr bawah, commanding you publicly with disobedience. So that's the detailed explanation of what's kufr bawah. In one narration, he... Maybe he or some narrator phrase it as kufr bawah, another amarka amarka ma'asiyatin bawahan. Why take this wording and not this wording? Which one is wording is most likely to be coming from the messenger of Allah? And both endings say, which you have, it's, it's, it's clear evidence from the book, from, from the kitab, from the revelation, in both. Yeah. So let's explain what's kufr bawah. It's commanding good ma'asiyah publicly. That's kufr bawah from the ruler. So permitting kufr laws, basically. For example, for committing haram maqtubi, permitting uh, 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 user banking, for example. That's allowing which must be prohibited, must be must be punishing by, by death penalty. Maybe. Well, in the case of like Ibn Abbas said, maybe not the first time because usually is sometimes difficult to assess is that usually or not. But after Istitaba and uh, sign, the signing and undertaking, Ibn Abbas said the next time his neck should be struck because uh, declaration of war from Allah. Declaration of war, what does it mean? Allah is coming on a horse back and fighting you? No, I mean, if you, the, 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 applic the application of, of, of warrior punishment will apply to you. Be, an, be announced that we will declare to you war. We will treat you as warrior. Okay, I'm going to continue with the with the still some quite this a bit of stuff. This is, this is, that's not easy. How to do practically organization, parties, analyze the situation. What what the, what we can do now? Do we have enough strength, strength to use force? That has to be judged in every situation by itself. But uh, the point of view, the Sharia point of view, is clear. It's clear. Okay, I'm going to continue because there are some points which uh, we can certainly make some points with, like general permissibility. Uh, there's, there's, there's quite a bit of good nuggets in there. Oh, then we have to figure out, yes, working towards Muslim unity is an obligation. Working towards Muslim uh, coordination, cooperation, integration is an obligation. But what do we mean by this and how do we go about it is the question. And 
when you bring, you know, what, what I was trying to say is that certainty belongs to the Islamic values and ideas, not a specific detailed system of governance, uh, but Islam brought about certain values that are extremely important for righteous governance that we should not neglect. I have always said this to myself about what we have done to Islam, uh, what we have done to the Quran. You know, I, I have I've been saying to myself, uh, we, we basically ignored it, silenced it, silenced it when it spoke, and we uh, made it to speak when it stayed silent. Mm -hmm. which, which means what? There are certain concepts that are very important uh, Islamically for righteous governance. Shura is one of them. And this is not because of liberalism, and this is not because of modernity. This is an this is a surah in the Quran that was named after shura. Two verses that spoke explicitly of shura. You know that their affairs are conducted on the basis of mutual consultation and consult them. And a surah that was named after shura, adl justice, is an extremely Islamic value. Equality between equals is an is an important Islamic value. Uh, separation of powers, you know, Ali radiallahu anhu and the, the story of the shield that dis disputed over the, the Jewish man and went to the judge. Separation of uh, powers within, you know, the independence of the ju judiciary or the judicial branch uh, is, is an important Islamic concept. So there are important some Islamic concepts. Some people argue that Islam provides a system of governance. I, I don't get entangled in terminology. So if you think that Islam provided a system of governance, system, that I, so I'm not gonna argue with you over the word system. I don't believe that Islam provided details with regard to governance. Islam provided principles, and that is the beauty and the genius of Islam. Mm -hmm. Because certain things need to be delineated in great detail, such as the Salah, because they never change. And other things are you know, Other change have to everything. be adjusted to adapt it to circumstantial realities that are variable, that are changing all the time. So, so think about the Sharia as having constant objectives and overarching maxims and then flexible legal framework. The Sharia itself, as Imam Shatabi says, the 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 Allah that is uh, Allah that adheres to us is not moving. It is the reality that is moving. So different, uh, basically, uh, circumstances will bring about different rulings, not because the Sharia is moving, it is because the reality is moving. The Sharia is fixed, mm -hmm. but the Sharia is based on principles and manata, effective causes. You know, the legal justifications or effective causes, the whatever uh, ratio legis, whatever you, you call it. So those manata are fixed. Those maxims are fixed. The reality is moving. So when the reality changes, this particular custom or this particular matter would be would fit under a different principle of Sharia. The principles are fixed. Mm -hmm. So the reality itself is moving like this under the fixed principles of the Sharia. So the flexible legal framework of the Sharia will accommodate the differences in, uh, in the different times and, and different places as, you know, the verifying erudite scholars have, you know, over and over stated and emphasized and reiterated. So in this particular area, you know, the area of politics, the sphere of politics, things change all the time. You know, the geopolitical realities, the sociopolitical realities change all the time. Therefore, having a fixed detailed system would not be appropriate. Even, yeah, would not be yes. appropriate. And, and even so, historically, we have seen different iterations of systems. So of course, yes. like whoever said that Al-Ahd uh, is part of, is, is recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Ahd, which is basically passing the covenant on. Mm. So you, you spoke about Imam al-Mawardi and uh, having a book on uh, Siyasa Sharia called the Akam al-Sultaniya. It's, it's a great book. I mean, is there any, in, in what has been said, any, anything controversial? Because my the way I look at it, the, some, some of this stuff can be preempted no, with the idea of... That's only because, 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 he's not, because uh, the, 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 he's not defining what the system means. The system, the system is, is, is the, the principles of governance. That's the system. These are things are ways, means, procedures, administrative steps, technicalities. These are ruled by the general principle of permissibility and suitability and ease of application and kindness to the believers. That's the principle about how to choose these things. Like, for example, the principle ruling with justice. How to excuse that with administrative apparatus. 
what is required, for example, to put to uh, to put, for example, of of the of observation of our of our administrative staff and how to account them, how to control their work, uh, like for example, uh, uh, making sure that that nothing is spent from the treasury without being uh, authorized properly by by Islamic law. Uh, how to control that? Do you require, for example, for 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 any uh, for any expenditure like two signature or fifty signature? Fifty signature is too much and does not add more security. So you ease things having one one employed or two checking things and that's it. Usually, system which have this this document must be signed by fifty people. The boss and the under boss and the under boss are clumsy and they delay the work. Just the one who doing the work to certify it's done properly according to the procedure fixed, and someone reviewing after him checking everything. Well, that's more than enough. Things like that. But this is not the the the, the issue. Is there is that things must be uh, must must be done properly. Purchasing, for example, for 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 uh, for. Uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for 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 uh, the state extension or for the school and so on, the Sharia and is clear. You cannot you cannot buy from a shop which gives you a commission or take a commission. This would be galud. This will be taken by the public treasury. How you prevent that? What procedure? You have to put procedure in place depending upon the situation. And the situation will be different than uh, these procedures are, are, are in the domain of mubah. I mean, that's the people sometimes confuse system with a like. For example, look at the the American Constitution. It says all. It makes all, all 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 administrative power in the hand of a president, and all uh, all uh, all uh, legislative power in in, the, in a congress of two chambers, and all 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 uh, uh, all judiciary power in in a supreme court. That's it, and then they added later even the so-called the bill of right. That's it. That I needed to add obviously how to elect a president. So this is a basic procedure of important things like that. That's it. That's it. All the other details and so on are enacted in a separate laws after discussing what's most beneficial, what has been the advancement of technology, how can this be implemented, can we do everything electronically or not, etc., etc., etc. I I don't the discussion is is based on the people do not understand between how to implement things by ways and means and procedure and what is the principle to be implemented. I think when 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 because when people they often refer to shout to be and all that kind of stuff and there's maslaha because it kind of muddies the water between those issues which are essential law and maslaha those which are nafsa is all nonsense. Maslaha is all mubahat available for you. So take maslaha as much as you can from it. And what what is what this procedure is more beneficial today. Tomorrow, uh, 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 blockchain, for example, control is better. You you switch to blockchain control. Some sometimes some some, some modern day uh, modernists they tend to use that to override a you know or encroach upon a, a clear afghan. Yeah, for let's, example, let, let them show us what what they mean encroach over afghan. If someone say say something, put it on the table and see where is the encroachment of afghan happens. Mm -hmm. People have common sense. You, you see the amount, you see this, you see the encroachment. Sometimes, you know, for example, e even in terms of the ruling, we say that look, there's, we can't implement Islam immediately. We have to do things gradually to the, the Darraj, all this kind of that's, stuff. That's so, another issue. That has nothing to do with that. Um, implement it immediately or not immediately. That's another issue. And sometimes the meaning of primitive Islam, meaning keeping uh, uh, haram, haram. No, they mean maybe the procedure to go over, it needs a transition period. Show me the transition period and how it will be done, and then we may agree on that. Like for example, let you 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 establish Islamic rule, and there are usually banking there. The, the the step is there to prevent any new usury contracts. Existing usury contract has to be settled and uh, and and, and uh, arbitrated so that they are eliminated bit by bit. You can't tell them that the contract should be cancelled because many people are depending upon the usury contracts, and they have business to run. They will collapse. But no more usury, and this existing one had to be eliminated, but has to be eliminated in stages. So there will be no shock for to the banks, nor any shock for the for for the for the, for the for the for the people, the one who are borrowed in time past, either by committing haram or not by you, you or you're not aware about haram and halal, but in, in usurious contract. On a side note, contracts eliminate them. It can be eliminated. There are procedures known for bank. So how does it? The, the narration of uh, Rasulullah to Ibn uh, uh, cancelling riba, starting with Ibn Abbas, was yeah. that an immediate one or was that in the same phase manner? Because wouldn't that set a precedent that it has to be done immediately? 
the moment the ayat came, there was no new usury. The old is one is new, which, which was concluded before. They you you get your uh, your capital. The the other one is is is, uh, is cut away and forgiven. And if it is for the contracts for installment, you have to read read redesign it and reconstruct it without the installment and so on and see what's remaining to be settled. That's an accounting issue. But the contract must be ended. How to end it? It may take some some months to end it. Okay, so the narration talks about about ending the contract and then. The, the mech doesn't specify how you do it. Is yeah, no, saying? it doesn't specify because it, it, that's how it depends upon the situation and the type of the contract. Okay, okay. I'm going to continue playing because there's some some bits about uh, contract and yeah. uh, modification. There's some, some pretty useful stuff. And there's no also new contracts, no new contracts possible. There will be no new contracts the moment the, the currency system is done the Islamic way. You don't create, you don't allow the, if, if there's no more charging for interest on money, banks will, will see the immediacy of, of, of creating money out of nothing. Because they're creating money out of nothing. Why? Because they can't charge interest on it. They, they, lend, they lend it, just make a book entry and close it after some time. And in that process, they create more money. Actually, it takes the people money for, for, for just record entries. Is de facto to be set in the future, meaning you burden the future generation with debts without their permission, without any right from your side. You enrich yourself in, in, uh, on, on the cost of the uh, future generation, children and grandchildren. That will cease immediately if there's no fraction of their banking. Fraction of their banking is depending upon the usurious system. With no usurious system, there's no incentive. Why should, why sh why should uh, give you a uh, Create money out of nothing and give you a loan for a hundred thousand just because it's a book entry, and settle the account to someone is for his account banking. Why should I do that? Because I can't charge interest. If there's no interest, I will not create. The whole system would be different. That's the most fundamental part. That existing contracts have to be settled. It may take some time. Maybe it's an installment. We just readjust the installment, so it becomes non usurious, and only the capital is 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 being done again and so on, recalculate again. And maybe still going in, in stages. It, it depends upon accounting. Account that will work that out. Yeah, we we'll continue now. Yeah, but is, no, uh, how thing. much of it is, uh, is direct revelation from God, and how much of it is the George, conclusions yeah. that He had reached, and yeah. based on uh, his his interpretive effort and the realities that He was surrounded by. At the same time, uh, Imam Abu Yada, uh, our Hanbali Imam, uh, had written a book called the Sultani also. Which has a lot of similarities with her today. A lot of similarities. Who, who, a bit too many, but, yeah. but, uh, but that's fine. Uh, but but at any rate, uh, is it a product? Is it basically the explicit revelation? No, absolutely not. Like you read it, read it impartially. See how many ayat al hadith uh, are, are being quoted there. Uh, see see how explicit the implication of the ayat al hadith that are being quoted there. So when Imam Wayala says that there are three different ways of uh, having legitimate leadership. Uh, or installing an imam. One of them is mutual consultation or the haq, you know, the idea of the haq, the contract. This should be the only one. This is the only one that, that is based on Islamic values, al haq, a contract. We are, the, we, the people, the Muslims, are a taraf al asil fi al haq. We are basically the, uh, the sort, of, sort of one party in this haq. Uh, we may have like an agent. To represent us, those are Ahlul Halal Aqd, those who bind and unbind, but their role is Wakil. They, they are our agent in choosing an Imam, but we are basically the people entitled to this right. We, the Muslims, are the people entitled to this right. And if there, are, if there is a group of people called Ahlul Halal Aqd, they are our Wakil, our agent, in signing this contract, in signing this contract with the Imam. It's a contract. And all the basically the conditions of contracts would apply to it, and we can basically modify the contract. We can adjust the contract. We can adapt the contract because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Muslims are not allowed to do it. We will get to how much we can modify it okay. on today. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. But but what I'm trying to say is now there, yeah. now Imam Abu Yala, Rahimahullah, says that it is also established through al ahd the covenant that is being passed on the covenant. What does the covenant mean? Wilayat al ahd the, the concept of wilayat al ahd the, the, the crown prince, the crown prince. This concept, where does it come from? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu endorsed Omar. 
Imam Thaymiyyah rahimahullah clearly says that this endorsement is not appointment by Abu Bakr. He did not appoint Omar. He endorsed Omar. Mm -hmm. Had Omar not been chosen by the majority of the companions, yes, exactly. this endorsement would not have meant anything. Likewise, when Omar gave the bay'ah to Abu Bakr, had Abu Bakr not been given bay'ah to by the majority of the companions, Omar's bay'ah would not have meant anything, you know, in, in Saqib al side. So uh, now, now this wilayat al-ahad or this endorsement had a different interpretation according to later uh, scholars and later times. What is it? It, it became binding. binding, yeah. So it is not endorsement, it is passing the covenant on to your son, or to your brother, or to whomever. And we know this as well, when Muawiyah instituted it for his son, there was a oh. serious backlash amongst oh. the senior Sahaba, oh. and the sons of the Sahaba, and, and others, 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 let me let me comment quickly. That's it. That, that all of this the, the, the fuqaha invented to justify the ahad of their current rulers. And what what argument they go? They go misinterpret what Abu Bakr did. Let's assume Abu Bakr did ahad. The Sharia is complete by the death of Prophet Abu Bakr made a mistake. Should be rejected. Simple. These people are playing with the deen. They play with the deen. Some of them unconsciously, some consciously. To get away with the rulers. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's, a, fund, that's a catastrophic problem here. It's a, a sorry, fundamental problem. But the reality, Abu Bakr was consulting the people who to, uh, he felt his death is near, and he decided to do like the election in his lifetime. And that's what's done. And he was an election committee of one single person. Because he was sufficient trustworthy from, by everyone. And secondly, because he has no, re as we clarify in Saqifa, he did not want to be an imam neither in day nor in night. And we have the narration there and the discussion of someone who said, I came from far away to ask you. Do you remember when we were in the battle campaign, I joined you, say, yes. what did you advise me? They said, I advise you don't be Amir over anybody. And now we became Amir. Where is your advice gone? We said, uh, we were afraid there will be a redda which we cannot be fixed. I accepted under duress. I would not have accepted. So Abu Bakr was absolutely trustworthy by everyone. They know that. And he even wanted to resign and give it to Ali. And Ali insisted to give him bay'ah. That's all in the saqifa discussed. And the narration there with the best is not there. Take that as it. So at the end of his life, he started consulting the people. And ultimately, it ended up, yeah, the, the two horses in front were uh, Omar and Ali. And later on, the people who worried about Ali that he's too young. The Arabs think that it must be a sheikh, must be someone of Asia. At that time, Ali was still young. Ali, by the death of the Prophet, he embraced Islam. The Prophet was 23 years with us as a prophet. Ali was seven years, so he was 30. At the time of Abu Bakr, was only two years, 32. 32 is too young. The American Constitution is 35 for the president. American Constitution, <laughs> modern one, 35, because people want someone to head and deal who is mature. Omar was more than that, 50, almost 45 or 50, more mature for the Arabic taste. So that's what balanced things. Although they worried about Omar and his roughness and so on. And they said, don't worry about his roughness because he see me soft, he's becoming rough. If he comes, you will see softness for him you were not expected. And ultimately, he said, the majority is, 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 is with, with, uh, with Omar. And uh, that's the one is uh, the result of election. After he died, the people came and gave bay'ah to Omar. When the bay'ah became Khalifa, it's not Ahad. But they interpreted it as Ahad to save what the, the criminal, which unfortunately Yasser Khadi say, Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, Allah la yarda alayhi. He's not, he's a munafiq kafir. Anyway, we did with Yazid. And even his his his, his crony said in Medina, Marwan al Hakam said, the Sunnah of Bakr Umar, and Abdul Rahman al Bakr stood saying, no, it's Sunnah of Bakr, not of Bakr Umar. Abu Bakr Umar did not put it in their own children or their relatives. They choose the best men in the Ummah. Even Abdul Rahman Abu Bakr did not understand things properly because he's late in Islam, does not have really the deep Islamic education the way it should be. But it's a sunnah of Hercules and Caesar. Caesar and uh, Kisra and Hercules. Kisra and Hercules. That's the sunnah of, of the empires, not the sunnah of Bakr and Umar. He exposed that. Although he did not argue exactly, but he's not the one he expected. He's not a faqih. He expected from exact... Uh, uh, so that and since then, Muawiyah they will they otherwise they will they will declare him to to be they, they should declare him what he is as a munafiq and the one who want to undermine Islam and did 
good steps in the uh, in direction of undermining, undermining this stuff. And most likely he's the one responsible for killing of Uthman and so on. But it's another, another issue today. So they want to make all that go through as, as legitimate. And all of them ignore the hadith about Khilafah Rashida and so on, and then Mulik and Jabariya. Jabariya started with Muawiyah, no doubt that he's one of them uh, oppressive. Uh, and they ignore the bloodshed, the enormous bloodshed in, in, in Iraq in time of Muawiyah. They could not ignore it in the time of Malik Muawiyah and Hajjaj. But in time of Muawiyah, it's worse than time of Hajjaj. Like in our research, Qatallah of Samarat ibn Jundu. Go and see it. So this is just all cover up. It's just muddying the waters. That should be all forsaken now. We have enough information now, alhamdulillah. It's available, everything, in the in computer, in the internet, and so on. And some preliminary and good analysis here and there is starting at least. I would say we did a good step forward, showing all this is Mawardi, why Mawardi, Hakam Sultani. He wanted to make the system, which was the system, because he was the chief justice for the Dawla Abbasiyya. He's not an innocent man, 100%. He wanted to make that system be Islamic within the farthest possible borders of Islam. That's it. That's still within Islam because other uh, other forces saying, no, this is kufr, this is violating Islam. He wanted just to make it Islamic. Well, just uh, you stretch Islam so uh, like a rubber, maybe that system can be called it. It's not. It's not. It's unfortunate. And make the people accept it and just, and the scholars then will feel happy and then can't, they can sleep and receive salaries if they are judges and things like that. It's unfortunate, that's it. We have to see this historic situation as it is, they analyze the situation. You see, even these two gentlemen, the Bashaif, just call this, let's say, Mu'awiyah radiallahu anhu. Insist on radiallahu anhu. Okay, you don't agree to say Munafiq Kafir, say just Mu'awiyah. Why radiallahu anhu say? This is a disease here, we have to overcome that. This is, this is the first step really to to revive the uh, Islamic civilization and, and Islamic governance, which will prove to be most, more effective and much better than any governance in the world, including the current so-called secular regimes, which are because they, they fail in some fundamental aspects of the principles of Islam, the real principle of Islam, and because of the economic systems having this usury and so on, leading to huge conglomerate and cartels, with the result that all the shura and all the election become essentially worthless and useless by a gentle way of it. And all of it, and all the, the, the popular people are just kept at bay by, by, by directing them toward the sodomy and the fornication and adultery and debauchery. That's the freedom they enjoy. The, the real freedom of shooting the leader and accounting him and pulling the sword in his face, being discounted bit by bit by bit by bit. With okay, all kinds we're of continue problems. now. There, there is still some pretty good stuff to go through. Yeah. Um, we can take a break and continue uh, later. Would you? We can carry on uh, further. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it to your discretion, inshallah. What's the time now? So, so but it is eight forty-four. No, we can't continue. Maybe 10, 15 minutes, and maybe continue another day. Okay, because there, 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 there are there are some 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 points. So, for example, later on, for example, the summary that is so, so we got, uh, talking about prioritization. Um, there's some good points around history as well, but yeah, we can probably we can read on Friday. Maybe maybe, maybe then we do it in another another day then. Okay. Let me nice. let me continue with this bit, and then because I can spin this off into two episodes anyway. Okay. This became this became the norm uh, historically. Historically, this became the norm. Where is this? And and the, the, I would say I would say that I appreciate the pragmatism of the fuqaha mm -hmm. because they wanted to keep peace and order. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate the pragmatism of the fuqaha. I do not appreciate the rigidity of the people who read those books and consider this to be Islam. Mm -hmm. So the pragmatism of the fuqaha, the flexibility of the fuqaha, rigid people now read those books and they consider this to be sort of this is what Islam says. No, this is basically the Papaha being flexible for their time, being yeah. pragmatic for their, their times. And that was the norm in, in, in their times. Uh, so, um, Sheikh, I mean, the other thing that, uh, again, historically, theory is one thing. The reality is that uh, there have been multiple occasions in our history where people have overthrown, people have taken power. I mean, the classic example is Umayyad and Abbas' uh, civil war that took place between the Muslim Ummah and the uh, Umayyads were massacred and the Abbasids came to power. And then the same thing happened at smaller scales within the Abbasid dynasties multiple times. So obviously we get to the issue of Al-Mutaghalib here and what do you have to say about the, the theory versus the reality of this? Well, Imam Abu himself said that Imam Ahmad indicated that Al-Mutaghalib would have legitimacy. Uh, so when he talked about the three different ways of installing an Imam, 
one of them, as we said, was that the contract that I'm, the other one is that I'm passing covenant on to the next one. And the third is a uh, And the Imam of said that the Imam had been negated, and that became basically the norm in, in, in our yeah. uh, tradition. It's not a peculiar position of Imam Ahmad, it became the norm in our fiqh tradition that whoever seizes power by force uh, will, will become an Imam, a legitimate Imam, and uh, his bayah will be binding, and everybody has to accept it. And that became basically the norm for a very big portion of our history. And that resulted in someone being a Kharijite today and being an Imam tomorrow. So they, they are cursed Kharijites today and they are Imams tomorrow. And the only difference is they won. That's the only difference. If, had they been defeated, they would have been condemned to this Kharijite status, status for the rest of their lives. But the, the, just because they won, they became the legitimate Imam that we have to pray for and that we have to uh, basically give him the, the clasp of our hands and the uh, fruit of our hearts. Uh, so this this was the reality. And that is why, and, and this is an extremely important, you, you know, uh, Point that we have to emphasize here uh, because I have been open enough to talk to people who are not like me, uh, people to, that may be described as secular Muslims, for instance. I have been willing to talk to them to hear their concerns and their trepidations and their reluctance about the concept of khilafah, their fear from this concept. They're, they're basically paranoia um, about, this, uh, about this concept because they have traumatized memories, particularly the people who were under the khilafah, the people who are a little bit more on the intellectual side, and they do read the history, and they are a little bit more familiar. So whatever it is, we, and I have to consider myself always to be one of uh, of the people who uh, want uh, for Islam to have its rightful yeah. place in the public uh, space or the public uh, sphere, uh, whatever we present to them, it brings about, you know, uh, like bad memories, nightmares uh, for them, because many of our khulafa were bloodthirsty lunatics, uh, many of them. And that, I, I have never shied away from saying this, and I will never stop, that many of them with bloodthirsty politics. And they use the Ummah as a father for basically their pursuit of power and their pursuit of consolidation of power and their pursuit of tyrannical power and their pursuit of uh, basically acting as the Khalifa of Allah, as basically God, divine agents on, on earth, or this, this is how they thought of themselves. This leads us to the very awkward reality. I've said this so many times in my lectures, that our history is human, our religion is divine. So, and so, one of the biggest, in my humble opinion, impediments to this discourse, and again, we're having a very frank conversation, so you said something that... Uh, many of our khulafa were bloodthirsty lunatics. Um, I want to emphasize here that, unfortunately, what we have is almost a high school level understanding of Islamic history amongst people that are actually not at high school level. And they have a very romanticized notion of the past. And they're fed either half myths or complete myths or complete tropes that have no legitimacy to them. And they perform or they form an image of the past that is closer to a fantasy than it is to reality. And there are so many examples. I mean, I, I want to give a library chat. I have a series called Library Chat. I want to give a library chat where I literally go over the top five or ten quotations from which we form this, this collective romantic memory. The famous story of Wamwar Tasima, for example. Right? I mean, it's complete, found 500 years later, and there's no awesome to it. I'm not saying it never happened, but for sure we don't know what happened. It's just a complete type of fairy tale esque type of story. Or the notion that Umar Ibn Abdul Aziz Ibn Abdul Aziz eliminated poverty in his entire Khilafah. I mean, how can any person actually believe that among 30 million people, there's not a single Fatih? This is a misunderstanding of a report found uh, of a very specific, I don't want to go there. It's a deconstruction. My point is that when you are fed these simplistic tropes, right? That the Khilafah was this grandiose affair where a single lady who was armed, the Khalifa himself would rally the troops to see her on the other side of the, of the land. That, you know, there was not a single poor person. Yeah, they were Quran time of the Prophet. You know, and you think that Umar ibn Abdul is going to eliminate poverty. When you have this. There was Amr al at the time of his grandfather. Of course, exactly. I mean, it's just, I mean, to, to, to then assume that there's this utopia out there. In my humble opinion, and this needs to be said, we lived through the 9 11 crisis, we lived through the Qaeda and ISIS crisis, now we're living through another mini crisis in this regard. Why are so many people attracted to this? unrealistic, idealistic, romanticized notion, one of the main reasons is that they have been taught a version of events that is divorced from reality. And they have this perception of the past that is simply not true. And hence, when you have radical groups or even fundamentalist groups that are not violent, propagating views that are unrealistic, right? So many people jump onto this proverbial bandwagon because they're wanting this elusive myth of a utopia that has never existed. And when you preach to them this reality, they push back because it's a fairy tale they've been taught their whole lives. And they, you literally deprive them of something that they've been yearning for for so long. And you said it so bluntly. So many of our leaders in the past were not righteous people. Dare I say, and this is again very harsh to say, perhaps that is almost the default, that the people in charge were not worthy to be in charge. And what things that happened under them, and I said this so many times, that the reason why the Khulafa Rashidun are the atypical exception is because they were the exception, you know, to the default of what happened after them. So when people understand this reality, it changes their perception, hopefully, and they become a little bit more mature. Uh, but to get back now, so let's fast forward now. We talk. I just want to just sort of stop there because because he, he does go into the issue of modern states and stuff. But I think it's worth um, a another, another day, another day, inshallah. But anyway, but also yeah, he's 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 definitely right in matter that this romantic vision of the history. But he himself is guilty of that because he's still saying Muawiyah al Allah He's still in a romantic vision of of the rubbish of Ahl Sunnah about Muawiyah and so on. 
معاويه از ايفن ميبي مور ويرث ذان عبد الملك بن غران هو هو اتاك الكعبه والمنجنيق. But he refused to say that because he's a Sahabi, that Sahaba are holy cows. You cannot, you cannot touch and things like that. That has to be, that has to be removed. We have to see really that they were a substantial number of them. Some of the important ones of them are Munafat Kafir. And one of them is Muawiyah as well. And more bloodshed was in his time in Basra than Hajjaj did in Kufa and Basra together. Read this summer, Qatar or summer of the Jundu. But has, this has covered up, been covered up. And play, and the Muslims through history have been really served, uh, served an, um, uh, an an imaginary picture, and a disastrous picture of, of the past, and being fooled. And the Hizb al-Tahrir is fooled about that because it said Khilafa ended in 1924. What kind of Khilafa is that? Even 1924, even with the measures of Hizb al-Tahrir, only the Kufr Bawah and, and ruling with, with Kufr has started uh, almost a century before. Or less 75 years with Abdul Majid introducing yeah. European laws and some of them are blatant kufr. So that's that's the, the it's, it's, it's just called halaf. And even before that, it's catastrophic. Only few, Umar ibn Aziz, maybe an exception. Al Ma'mun is an exception. Maybe Muhammad al Fatih, who is not a Khalifa, the Sultan, the Khalifa was some kind of a non entity sitting in Cairo at the time, Abbas, a non entity. Yeah. Just a, an imaginary person who nobody knows about him except that his name is being printed on the currency and his name mentioned in, in the Jum'a sermon, that's it. It's a mockery. It's a historic mockery. It was that's, also a that's, that's, that, that's very Khalifa and this very Mamluk state, which is that supposed to be the Khilafa and the Sultan, are the one who refused the Uthman. He wanted to send an army to help Andalusia until Andalus was lost. Seventy years later, Salim the Fatih, Salim the First, uh, was fed up and attacked them and took the Khilafah. Then. But it was too late, and it was gone. Essentially, it was unsavable. It's also worth. It. I just yeah. thought. So the brother mentioned about secular learning people, leading people in their view of the Khilafah. Um, it's worth commenting that because we, we take another his... another occasion but maybe, they... maybe touch on that just because we, we've played so I thought that he, he helpful... said he said something was very interesting say secular muslim i don't think there's something called secular muslim if they are genuinely secular they are not muslim and if they're muslim genuinely they're not secular he has to define what we mean with secular if he means people rejecting the khilafah his tahrir and this historic khilafah and mawardi they are not secular they're completely right but maybe they do not articulate it probably from Quran and Sunnah because the, the one who should articulate that have failed them. Scholar through history, like we are al I mean, irrespective, say, say for example, say they're non Muslim, Dhimmi, the, the people who would end up being Dhimmi. Because there's a perception that Islam is intrusive, Islam is going to be, you know, like, like that, for example, the ISIS that, model that, and all that. that, that kind of... that's, what, that's Western propaganda. Concerning Dhimmi and so on, they have been better in, in the Islam than really now. Uh, practicing Christian are better, better protected in, the, in Islam than they are in Europe, in so-called Christian countries. But even, just... even for example, look, look for example, the, 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 one of the things about the loss of shura and the the ramifications of that. If we reinforce the idea that the shura is an absolute must-have, the fact that there's this freedoms guaranteed within Sharia that you know unprecedented this idea that the state doesn't actually intervene as much as as for example you see in iran or in saudi where you have Mutawa and all this kind of no, stuff no, it, to it, reinforcing it, that mentality the, the state should be minimal as minimal as only in uh, work where it is necessary only when it is necessary only only when necessity dictates any other area he should abstain from that so the modern secular state is is, is really extremely intrusive and oppressive I but really... uh, that needs another occasion, maybe. Also, uh, maybe okay. an opportunity to comment also on the impossible state of uh, Wa'il Halak or something like that, and mixed with that. But okay, uh, have you, have you... we'll see what, what these what he mean with secular Muslims. Uh, such such yeah, there's not much detail given. I think this is probably just in the discussion because I can I can imagine I can I can kind of see from his his perspective when people, you know, when you're in your general discussion with people, they'll say, look about. It minorities they look at this look at that. you could just look around you and see the kind of the perception of religious religiosity no, that's, that's, what, that's not what they mean we'll see inshallah we'll see inshallah in the next okay. time. and let's we'll see what, what they mean they have to define what it means secular Muslim. i mean there's not much uh, because i've gone through this there's not much further to add on this particular thing 
if, uh, if well, he does go into his own current... the state can enact any laws they like based on benefit and so on and even import western laws that's a clear copper that's not a muslim uh, maybe an ignorant one he's to be educated but no one really understood even la ilaha illallah would, would say that that's not a muslim that's one traditionally inheriting the name of Islam is Muslim, Muslim cultural wise. Like, uh, what's the name of this famous uh, atheist of the good delusion? What's his name? Uh, uh, okay. Richard Dawkins. Dawkins, yeah. He said, um, uh, I am more inclined, I, I feel more, more, more close to uh, being cultural Christian than cultural Muslim. <laughs> Racist. <laughs> Racist. Racist. <man. laughs> When, when it comes to Islam, then he's better. He f feels that he is close to Christianity as a culture. I don't believe in the, all these hocus pocus and his divinity and so on. <laughs> Maybe he gets nostalgic for the better TV programs that used to come on Christmas time. Yeah, it becomes like just a happy memories. Yeah. And these people are all just mostly either jokers or, or just completely brain dead. But we'll, we'll, we'll discuss what they say if there's anything substantial to be discussed. I mean, I mean, I can, I can tell you. So the, this different. grand is like they're talking. He's an atheist, and still he's a cultural Christian. Uh, maybe he's a cultural Muslim, and they say they inherited the name and so on. But the reality, they, they don't believe it's a revelation. It's from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They're obligated. There's, there's obliged to to what's ruling it because it has been abolished through Islamic history, through hundreds of years and so on. And I know someone who they were praying with just Jumaah when I was studying Germany in the sixties and so on. The regular and so on, and they were defending Atatürk that he saved Islam from the corruption of the Ottomani, and Islam becomes just separated from the dirty or dirtiness of politics and things like that, because they have they have understood from Islamic history and from European and, uh, uh, politics is dirty, lies and fabrication and so on, not managing the affairs according to the revealed law. That that's the misunderstanding of the meaning of a state and living in a society as a human being. Fundamental problem there. Taking history as as as, 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 as uh, the starting point will will get you nowhere. But let's just leave that to another occasion. I think today okay. is enough for today, and we address that, the remaining issue at another time, inshallah.